Hello, BookTube. Hello. Welcome to our new channel. I'm Becky. I'm Scott. And uh, we just thought we'd start a channel talking about books. I mean, we love to talk about books among ourselves. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of friends who are who are big readers, so we thought we'd make this channel and maybe meet, you know, meet a few of you or just uh, discuss books with a few of you. And share our favorite pastime with someone. Yeah. I mean, we... We love books. We know all the booktubers love books. Um, some of them are much well, you know, much more well read than I am. And the same is going to be with Becky. But hey, that's what we're here for. Get a little better, a little bit better read. Yep, yeah, we're just a family of three, and you see all three of us right here. Say hi. Say this hi. is this is our nine-year-old Boston no, Terrier right. Link, and he doesn't want to say anything today, but that's okay. <laughs> He's a he's a good little guy. Yeah. Now we we don't really have a, a format as yet. We haven't really gotten that far into it. Uh, we know we want to talk about uh, things we read in the previous month and things we're going to be reading in the the, the coming month. Um, we're we're going to try to put out two uh, two videos a week. Um, yeah, we're going to try that for a while. Two videos a week and see how that goes. Hopefully, we can. Put out more content, but there's a chance or maybe some weeks we won't be able to put out two videos. May, one may have to suffice, but um, I would love to be able to put out three or four videos a week. But, of course, I'm not the fastest reader in the world. I'm really, really trying to get there. Um, I read, I guess, a little above average. Uh, Becky's a much faster reader than I am. Yeah, uh, not really. Well, I would it say it depends are. on the book. It really does. Well, I, I mean... I, one one of the books I just read, uh, I'll talk about here in a few minutes, and you can understand why I read it quite a bit slower than uh, maybe some of the things that Becky read. But that's all well, right. Well, same with me. I'm reading a Jane Austen book right now, and it's, it's taking me a minute. Yeah. All right. So I guess we can uh, we can jump into that. We can talk about what we've been reading. Uh, I mean, I guess you can start that, Becky. Sure. Uh, so, oh, but, it would, first off, if if the table starts to shake, it's because Link's making a bed under the table. So sorry. He's only got a blanket under there, but he's he's making a real production of it. Um. So behold, the books I read last month. That's not true. Um. I I had one book that was an audio book, and it was uh, a Kate Carlisle cozy mystery. Uh, that's one thing uh, about us, actually. That we didn't go into. Um, I'm going to be covering a lot of the things that are, are uh, the more mainstream. I'll be covering cozy mysteries and mysteries and horrors and maybe some romance. I love a good body stripper. And he's going to be doing... I'll be doing more classics. Um, whether they be modern classics, ancient classics, you know, any anything like that. Um, and I'll be doing a little more science fiction and fantasy. I love Star Trek and Star Wars books. Um, and I even love a lot of, you know, some crime fiction, like, like you'll see the one I'm reading now, uh, when, when I get to that. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're going to, uh, one thing we are definitely going to try to do is, is, is one classic a month. Um, and we're both going to be doing that. Well, so um, I'll, I'll be doing a few more. I think I have, well, I guess two picked out for next month that would be considered class or for fe February that'll be considered classics. Okay, I'm going to try to do one classic a month. <laughs> I like my cozy mysteries. I can't help it. That's all right. So this that's what I did this month. I actually read two cozy mysteries. Um, this is well. I don't even know if this can really be called a cozy mystery. It's, I, I guess strictly speaking, it's a cozy mystery. Um, and then I had one I had I I uh, listened to one on audio book by Kate Carlisle, which was a fan fantastic book which all of her bibliophile books are um if you've if you've never read kate carlisle her bibliophile mysteries are they're fascinating they're about uh, about a bookbinder who uh she keeps discovering dead bodies <laughs> <laughs> i think i would start to worry but anyway um so i've i've read two cozy mysteries this month and that's actually i'm i've actually got three uh set aside for next month in my to be read but the my uh, claim to fame this month is I'm reading Persuasion. I've read, um, well, by Jane Austen, I've read three of her books. I've read Emma and Sense and Sensibility and Pride and Prejudice. 
Um, and, and guys, I'm, I'm an English major. I haven't read the other three. It's, it's, it's awful. Shameful. It is, it's shameful. Completely. So I'm, <laughs> thank you. So I'm getting all of the, uh, the Jane Austen books off of my, um, off of my list, my wall of shame. So it, even for next month, I've got, uh, Northanger Abbey waiting in the wings. So I, I'm going to get that off of my, uh. Off of my list of shame, and then after that will be Mansfield Park, of course, and then I can like proudly call myself an English major again. And uh, <clears throat> one of the things, the book she just showed you, that that copy of Northanger Abbey, it was. We went to a bookstore today, and it was one of the few books in the place. Just, I mean, the, there was probably less than a thousand titles in the entire book. Yeah. Or in the entire store. There was um, the the whole the whole outer rim of the bookstore was lined in, in bookshelves and then they had two freestanding books and that's that was that was it. Yeah, it was uh and their their only used bookshelf was covered by something else and I, we just kept waiting around and nothing happened. Well they had so, a, they had a Spider Man uh uh what's it what what's the word I'm looking for? Event where it's like event, yeah. yeah, where like everybody in the entire town brought the, brought their children to have pictures with Spider Man. So we, I, I guess we picked a really bad day to go. Yeah. But from what <laughs> I understand, their their uh, their biggest claim to fame is actually book signings. They have a lot of local uh, uh, authors come in and sign books for them, and that's where that's that's how they stay open. It's not their books. Yeah, that's not. But coming up, coming on the twelfth, they do have the author of. Uh, the boatman's daughter coming for a for a signing. So I would like to go to that if possible. We've been wanting that book anyway. So I guess now I'll show you my uh, books that I read in January. It's kind of a slow slow month for me, and you'll understand why here in a second. <laughs> the fastest book I read this month was this guy right here, Splinter of the Mind's Eye. And oh, and another thing, as you can tell, when I buy a book, I'm not too worried about the uh, the condition. I buy a lot of really crappy crappy condition books and I don't mind that. I like to give them another life. As long as um, it's readable. Yep. Now Splinter of the Mind's Eye was interesting. It's a book, it's a Star Wars book by Alan Dean Foster and it was the first extended universe book written one year or less after um, Star Wars episodes, episode four, A New Hope, the very first Star Wars movie came out in 77. Um, I think this book came out in 78 and it's very interesting because it has some uh, elements that you can tell um, George Lucas borrowed from Alan Dean Foster. This this was not, and well, it, it, there was a really strange element in this that there was a Luke and Leia romantic relationship almost. Well, and yeah, that was that was before that anybody realized that Luke and Leia were siblings. Yeah, so anybody that says uh, George Lucas knew what he was doing in advance before, um, you know, the last two movies, I don't think, I really don't think he did. I don't think no, so either. I don't think so. But it was a very interesting book. Um, I'd say it's more important than good. Like, any, I think any Star Wars fan should read it, just to have a better understanding of where a lot of the, the modern, uh, modern Star Wars elements came in. And then the second book I read was Little Women. Um... A lot of people were probably surprised. Yeah, a lot of people <laughs> were probably surprised by the the uh, idea that I was reading that book. But I really enjoyed it. It was an excellent book. Um, you know, I would say it was written in a very energetic spirit and one that uh, that that I thought lent itself really well to a book. I think some people would consider it a children's book in a way, a young people's book, but well, was it meant for young readers? I young think, readers? I think it was, but at the same, but but I think, and I think it's a great story for young readers, but it's not something you can just fly through. It's not something I could fly through because I had to get used to the Victorian time. You know, the I mean, it, it's an American book, but it was during the Victorian time in England. Um, Eighteen, what did I say? Eighteen sixty-one, I believe the book was was published. Uh, probably written in 1859 and 1860, something like that. But excellent. I mean, I, th I think it is for absolutely everyone to read. And I think everyone should. Um, but probably the 
the book I love the most that I read this month was a Scarlet Letter. Um, man, Hawthorne is deep in his writing. He is very, very difficult to follow sometimes. And, and you can tell there are times he loves to hear himself speak. But I enjoyed the book. I thought it was excellent. And it's actually a first time read for me too. I never read this in school. Um, well, I went to private Christian school, so I, you know, <laughs> that book is not going to be part of the reading in a, in a Christian school. But um, I'm actually kind of surprised by that. That it, that it wasn't? Yeah. yeah. Well, I think um, the fact that it isn't is because uh, Hawthorne did not look upon the the did not look on the the Christian people in this book in a romantic way at all. In a, in a very in a very positive light, I maybe it's because I don't, I don't have the best view of modern Christianity, but you know maybe someone who does, maybe someone who has a more positive view, uh, would would see it would see it in a different light. So maybe yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but those are the only three I read that I read this month. But I, but I will show you what I'm reading right now. Um, that I'm almost finished with. I'll be finished with it tomorrow, probably. Um, it's Sanibel Flats by Randy Wayne White. Um, Steve Donahue has talked about this guy three or four times on his channel, and I thought I'd give it a shot. And man, this is good. This is an excellent book. And um, I think there are some things in it that wouldn't be written today, like uh, some of the female characters are a little, are a little weak, but I'm hoping as the series goes that... Uh, that they become a little stronger. He gets that a they little braver little, with yeah, these women. Yeah, and that they're a little better written. But of course, this is just the first book in a 26 book series. So, okay, that's that's something he mentioned was we're we're uh, very very uh, big fans of Steve Donahue. Yeah, we like the Steve Donahue uh, Facebook uh, or I'm sorry, the Steve Donahue YouTube channel. We also watch uh, Alex Black on a regular basis. Mayberry Book Club. There are a few others as well. Um, they're not coming to mind, but but, <laughs> but, but we, we do watch quite a few. Yeah, we're Donna Huguenots. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Uh, so if you want to go. Oh, I, I I forgot to mention. I read a Abandon by. His name is not Blake, Blake Crouch. Crouch. Blark, Blake. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Blake Crouch. I keep wanting to call him Barty Crouch. You know why. But uh, I'm, I'm going to do a, a, a review of that one because, oh my God. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a turd. It is what she's saying. So it was, it was a trial. You want to go over our TB Reds? Yeah, you go ahead. You go first. Okay. So like I mentioned, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my, uh, my, my, uh, list of shame. Fixed. I'm going over North Anger Abbey next. I'm actually really looking forward to this. I'm I'm in a Jane Austen mood now since I'm I'm going through persuasion. Um, what are you thinking I, of persuasion? I absolutely love it. It helps that the the main character is named Anne Elliot. That's my mother's name. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm. Uh, it's it's. It's very strange. She has a very, she has a way of writing her her characters that that just it, it tugs on the heartstrings. I feel really bad for Anne Elliot. She's uh uh she's 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 dragged through the mud. They 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 treat her like garbage. They really do. And she and she accepts it as her due, and just moves along with grace. That's just mind boggling. I would be a nightmare. But um. I'm also going. I've, I've got three uh, cozy mysteries set aside because I love cozy mysteries. I think I've already said that. Um, the first, the first two are actually the first two in a series, and they're the wedding planner mysteries. Um, they're by Stephanie Blackmore, engaged in death. And I really like the uh, the the stories where uh, 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 the four the four that the former lover is is just suddenly out of her life and she goes and finds a the main character goes and finds a brand new town and she's inherited an old mansion from somebody and she's going to turn it into a bed and breakfast or something that's kind of she's turned this into a wedding venue or something it's, it sounds interesting um and then crime and poetry 
is by Amanda Flower, and it's a magical bookshop mystery. I really, really enjoy the books that have a, a, a the cozy mysteries that have a paranormal aspect to them, like magic shops or um, something like that. And even the 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 series I mentioned earlier by Kate Carlisle, the uh, the bibliophile series, even they have a, a a tiny paranormal aspect to them. I think they're just loads of fun. And you're actually writing a book similar to that as well. I am writing my first cozy mystery. It it might get published one day. We'll see. I'm working on it. Um the last one that I'm, is 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 a, a bit different than what I've already shown you. I have a couple of of Regency romances and the cozy mysteries, but this one is called The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. And it's about a, a young man who I it doesn't come out right out and say it, but I believe he's autistic, who comes across a, a dead dog. It's a dead dog that he knows very well in his neighborhood. And it's it's, it's his journey on, on trying to, to solve the case. And the first, like, three pages really, really grabbed my attention. I <laughs> repeated out in Barn Barnes & Noble. But he... he the first three pages, he goes through how he came to understand emotion and how he came to recognize emotion in other people. And I thought that was fascinating. And I, I, I'm actually really, really looking forward to reading this. So it's a curious uh, incident of, of the dog in the nighttime by Mark Haddon. I'll, I'll let you know what I think of it. You okay. want to go? Yeah. yeah. I'll show you what I'm going to read. And remember, I told you I don't, I don't really care about the... The uh, condition of books. As a matter of fact, I kind of like books with character. And here's one of those. Um, Jedi Search. As you can tell, it's a missing part of the cover. See, it has style. Yep, it has It has some character. I ordered this probably eBay or Thrift Books or something like that in an acceptable condition, even though I would call that barely acceptable. This is the first book in the Jedi Academy trilogy. Uh, one, of, one of the early Star Wars um, uh, novels. But I am trying to read a Star Wars book a month, and I'm also trying to read a Star Trek book a month. And I've heard this is one of the better Star Trek books uh, in the entire series. It's Doctor's Orders, and it's a book about bones. So, uh, one of my favorite characters. It's, it's uh, book 50 in the original series. You can't go wrong with a book about Dr. McCoy. Yep, agreed. He's an awesome character. Um, and this one was a recommendation from my friend Aaron. Um, and so it's The Prince and Other Stories by um, uh, Machiavelli. And I, this is one I'm really looking forward to. Um, I've been wanting to read this for about a year. It's I don't know why I haven't. It's not long. Not long at all. Very, very short. And uh, th there are a few other writings in here that I want to read as well. Um, and, it, and if you see these Barnes & Noble classics, that's because I collect these things. I know they're cheap. Um, but I've... I've had great luck with them. They, um, they they stay together very well. I haven't had any problems with them. I think that's that, that one was like a $6 book. Um, and I'm also doing this book on the recommendation of, of Steve Donahue as well. I mean, even though he didn't really recommend Ernest Hemingway, I, I know he's not a fan, and I know Becky cannot stand him, but I'm going to try to... <laughs> get through his short stories if i like the short stories then i will go ahead and um maybe pick up you know to, for whom the bell tolls or something I, I i especially don't like the sounds of kilimanjaro okay <laughs> well luckily it's short so it won't it shouldn't take me long Good luck. and if i get through all four of those and i think i will because they're none of them are long books at all i'm going to go with this one as well the hemlock cup um this is a book I'm extremely excited about reading. It's Socrates, Athens, and the Search for the Good Life by Bettany Hughes. Uh, this is a this is a nonfiction book about that time. It is, you know, a, a historical account, or well, not even really an account, but a, but a historical book about the time of uh, Socrates and the the trial of Socrates and and all that. So that's something I'm really looking forward to. Um, and when I finish it, I think I'd like to do a review of this one. And I'd also like to do a review of The Prince um, by Machiavelli. So if I finish those two, 
Um, if I finish both of those this month, I will do a review of both probably on the same video. It's a really pretty cover too. Yeah, it is. Although what I don't like is I got the paperback copy and unfortunately the, the, the pictures inside are black and white. Um, the, the, the pictures in the, in the hardcover copy were in full color and they were gorgeous. Um, so I, I wish I could have gotten that copy, but at the time I could only afford the paperback copy and that's what I got. So, How can you read this? There's no pictures. <laughs> there are pictures. They're just not pretty pictures. You did it. They're, they are definitely not pretty. Nope. There's, there's a lot of chapters in here though. You yeah. They're very short. Be able to very short chapters. I mean, this is, this is a pretty cover too. Look at that. It's so pretty. Yep, I think so too. And then you've got <laughs> this cover. Yeah, Dover Thrift editions are not known for their covers. It's not lovely. I mean, that, that, that was what, a $4 for, book? Also not known for their font. Yeah. It, these are daunting. They really are. They're they're kind of scary to look at. You, you, you open the page and you've just got this block of cramped script. I am glad that they're out there though because... Uh, um, you know, five dollars. They make a, it affordable. For yeah, they do. They, they, really make, they make do. it affordable for anyone. Yeah. A lot of these end up in schools, and I th and I think that's a fine thing. And Jane Austen should end up in schools more. Oh yeah. Especially high schools. Stop making people read Romeo and Juliet and make them read Pride and Prejudice. Yeah, or just ask them to. <laughs> I almost said Jane here. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, that's that's wrong. All right. Well, I guess that's going to be it. But uh, we appreciate you tuning in to our very first video. Uh, let us know what you think. Mm -hmm. If, you know, uh, let us know if there's anything you'd like to see us review or read or talk about. Um, we may be able to get to it. Uh, between the car and the jobs, that's about 12 hours a day, um, five days a week. So we're, we will try. Um, and in case you're wondering, that's why I only get in for maybe five books a month is because of work right now and hopefully um i can you know especially since we're starting this channel it's going to make me sit and read a lot more and that, that's another reason i wanted to start this channel yeah I, I get about i get about an hour a day to read um so this is it's ambitious but i'm going to do it you can do it yeah and, and yeah you well, can do that i think you can do that standing on your head so i think we're good yeah i think so yeah. But we will see you next time, and hopefully you'll tune in again. Yeah. Bye-bye, Clip 2. Bye. -bye,